Thank you very much. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the program. My name is Dave Letterman. I'm going to be the host here for the next hour. You really have no choice in the matter. I'm the host for the next hour. <laughs> Last night, uh, it was interesting. I was watching the uh, uh, National League uh, pennant uh, games uh, on uh, ABC. George Bush, Vice President George Bush, was in Houston. He threw out the first pitch, and I'm thinking to myself, gosh, where does the guy find the time? <laughs> Um, so I'm on my way down here to the uh, studio a couple of minutes ago, and I run into an NBC executive, a high-ranking NBC executive, and he says to me that uh, what he really likes to do while watching the ABC coverage of the uh, baseball games, he says, I like to pretend that I'm seeing uh, Jim Palmer sitting there in his jockey shorts. He says, it actually enhances the uh, enjoyment of the game for me. <laughs> what did I do to that one, Kevin? Did I get that? <laughs> yeah, pretty much it. Pretty much it there. Let me, uh, uh, now this is serious. Am I beginning to look more and more like William Shatner? Is that? <laughs> because as you know, I have the worst toupee in show business. Thank you. Thank you very much. Interesting uh, statistic in today's New York uh, Post. Uh, seven out of ten New Yorkers prefer the sound of a gunshot to the sound of a sickening thud. <laughs> and a family from Texas wrapping up the opening portion of tonight's program has just defected to the Soviet Union. Asked why, the husband said, well, my wife uh, is always getting mistaken for Dick Butkus. And uh, <laughs> we, we figured if we moved to Russia, she could get work as a model in Moscow. So we... <laughs> Horrible joke, I'm sorry. My, my sincerest apologies to Dick Butkus. Now, <laughs> is it William Shatner, Paul? What do you think? Uh, I think it's, uh, <laughs> that doesn't look like a toupee. <laughs> oh, good. Then I got my money's worth. To me, it's a look. Is it, isn't that the sign? That's right. There's no <laughs> such thing. Well, there's no such thing as a good toupee because a good toupee is 100% undetectable. That's right, exactly. <laughs> Leonard Nimoy, though, I think, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's stop this. What a show we have here tonight. Did Martin Mull arrive? I didn't see him earlier. Yes. He is on the premises? Great. Martin Mull is here, a wonderfully talented, funny man. Uh, what, what do you suppose my tie is pointing at exactly? I don't know. I don't know. It's just a thought, isn't it? Um, also, uh, the founder of the Learning Annex, Bill Zanker. Bill Zanker, now betting third, playing short. Zanker <laughs> is here tonight, and... Thank you very much. Well, thanks a lot. It's a hot show. We do have a big number. You know that nutty kid, Eddie Money, how crazy he is with yeah. his records and his hits. Yeah. He's got a big hit record out now. Uh, Take Me Home Tonight, I think right. it's called. A tribute to uh, growing up as a kid and listening to Ronnie Spector exactly. singing Be My Baby on the... And she sings it on the record, and they're both here tonight. Ronnie Spector is here as well. And Eddie Money, and we're going to try to do our rendition of a little thing. A musical treat. Up. Yeah, a little musical treat, a little it's later It's a musical on. valentine but you got to stay up. But you got to stay up for the whole show to see it, because it's going to be, you know, towards the end of the show. i got a lot of stuff to talk... Oh, you know who dropped by today, Paul? Who? Connie Chung, the lovely Connie Chung. Really? Yeah, dropped by. Did she by. ask about me or anything? Oh, of course she asked about you. What did, you, by. Huh? What did you say? Well, we're still working on that deal where she would be like a co-host on the show and maybe come in and sing a song and then sit down and, <laughs> and do headlines. Great. But she, Connie Chung, is, is one fabulous babe. And I, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But, you know, so is Garrick Utley. So it's... NBC News has a plethora of fabulous babes, don't you think, Paul? I hadn't really thought of them in, in that light, you know, but... You know, it turns out that the people who hooked up my cable a few years ago, I'm paying like $400 a month to get cable. <laughs> it turns out it, it's the same company that uh, uh, Mr. Zaccaro is allegedly involved in with a... <laughs> I, sw I swear to God, it's the same company. And now, a couple of days ago, not only do I pay this exorbitant fee monthly to get these wonderful first-run films, uh, now they're offering a pay-per-view kind of a deal. So it's not like the 400 bucks is not enough, really, to cover what I consider to be vital television enjoyment. I have to now pay extra if I want to see the really good stuff. 
about it. Oh, and in the oh, by the way, I want you from now on to start calling me dude. <laughs> Do you I mind? would be thrilled to start calling you. Do I've you been mind? dying to call you, dude, for, you know. Yeah, we'll do it. Do you mind? All right, can I give it a try? Or just work one in a little later. Not right now. Just work okay. it in a little later. Okay, all right. I think. And in, in the uh, playoff pool tonight, uh, I lost last night. When did Wendell win? You won two nights ago? Yeah. yeah. Last night you won. How much did you win in the pool? A hundred bucks. Not a bad deal. So here's the score I drew out of the pool. I get, if, if the game ends in a three to three tie, I'm the big winner. <laughs> That happened in 68, I think. Uh, seventh game of the World Series was a 3-3 tie, and it's, it's all in Cooperstown now. You can go there and look it up. <laughs> Viewer mail night. Oh, I gotta remind you one other thing. Look at this. We have here a copy of the new Teen Beat magazine. Have you seen this, Paul? Yeah, I did see it uh, earlier today. Yeah. Teen Beat magazine. This is their newest uh, issue. Uh, January 1987. Boy, they're way ahead of themselves. $1.95. And on the inside, take a look at this, if I can find it. There it is, right there. Now, this is, this is insane. We're very near the end of civilization, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Chris Elliott, late night hunk. In here, according to Chris, he was born May 31st, 1967, which would make him 19. <laughs> that means that when we hired him five years ago, yes, he was 14. <laughs> uh, Chris Elliott, a late night hunk in uh, the new issue of uh, Teen Beat. Here we go, let's get on with it. It's uh, viewer mail night, ladies and gentlemen. More, te more people watch this television program than, you know, make up your own statistic. Here we go. <laughs> Letter number one. Dear Dave, what the hell can you do with a penny? Help. Paul Stone, Schenectady, New York. Ah, uh, I, I think you can buy commercial time on ABC. <laughs> What'd you think of that, Paul? Very, very impressive. Very impressive start. Very nice. Very good. What? Oh. Thank you. I'll, I'll get it to it. I'll get it. I wasn't really addressing him as anything this time. It was just a nice, a nice display, right. sir. Okay. Letter number two. Dear Dave, if you ever write a book, will you mention my name? Thanks, Brent Isaac, Arnold, Pennsylvania. Uh, good news, Brent. I'm happy to take this opportunity to announce the publication of my latest book, and you can rest assured, Brent, your name is in there, buddy. Here, take a look at the new book. It'll be on the newsstands before you know it, and in bookstores everywhere. <laughs> Solid comedy, the phony book. Solid comedy. I'll get to it. Letter number three. By the way, Mookie Wilson is mad at me. Mookie Wilson? I know, he's, he's nuts. I had a dream about Mookie Wilson no, last no. night. Uh, dear Dave, why are there so many talk shows on TV this season? Just wondering, Dave Nelson, Sacramento, California. Uh, so many talk shows. Gee, I, I didn't know. Are there, are there a lot of talk shows on? So many talk shows. I don't know. It was a mistake. It was, it was just an accident. Listen, Jeez, we don't want don't anything know. upsetting, Mr. Miller. Get the hell up there. Let me go take care of that. Jeez. Morty, Morty, what is this about talk shows? No, it says no, here no. that there's so no many talk, talk shows. No, 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 no. But it says no. right there, so no, many talk shows. everything's the same. It's just you and Johnny. Me and Johnny. You and Johnny. And Johnny. Right. <laughs> Even Merv's gone. Nothing's changed. Merv's gone. Merv is gone. Merv's not, not, Merv's Johnny, not coming back, is he? The guy is nuts. The guy is nuts. Oh. You and Johnny. Just the same. Me and Johnny. It. Everything is the same. And Merv's not coming back. You and Johnny. Oh, great. Thank you. The guy's probably a crackpot or something. He's crazy. Okay, great. You and Johnny. Me and Johnny. Nobody else. Nobody else. Okay, great. Thank you. Me and Johnny. Oh, oh, boy. Uh, that that kind of gave me a start there. That did. Continuation of three here. We better nail that as well. Uh, dear Dave, has Paul ever been what you consider unruly? Still watching Garen Inboden and Gibby Inboden. Logan, Ohio. It's the Inbodens from Logan, Ohio, Paul. Uh, well, uh, Garen and Gibby, uh, Paul is one of the most... 
Paul is one of the most even-tempered men I've ever known. Uh, though, you know, come to think of it, there was that one time, I guess he got a little, what you could say, uh, un unruly here. Oh, yeah, it was in the post or the news or something. And uh, see, and I don't know exactly what I'm... Wacko hipster and bloody subway slash fest. Paul... Paul, did... did uh, how did this thing ever work out, by the way? Actually, uh, we're, uh, we're still working on it. My, uh -huh. people are, uh, my people are talking to their people about it. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> no, problem. no problem. Well, good luck with that, by all means. Thank you very much. Shall I do it now? <laughs> I'll do it. Oh, I'll do on. it in a, in a spontaneous... If you're not going to take this seriously, Paul, let's just forget it. Because... I'll do it. No, I'll do it now. Seriously. No, 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 don't do it now. You've got to just slide it in. Slide it in. Okay, I'll slide it in a little later on. <laughs> I, I think we've all heard that, haven't we? <laughs> Dear David, uh, why don't you wear your glasses on television? Paul does. That's right, he does. Sincerely, Melissa Morganroth, uh, Alton, Illinois. Uh, well, Melissa, gosh, I guess that I'm just a little vain about uh, wearing my glasses on the show. You know, I wear these lousy contact lenses. And it's not really a problem, but it used to cause some difficulties when I wasn't wearing anything. Take a look at this old file tape, and it should explain the situation. So the bartender, see, has never experienced anything like this before in his life, and uh, he's finally overcome by curiosity. And he says, well, doesn't your little friend lose his balance? And the rodeo clown says, lose his balance? Hell, he's eating dinner in there. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, boy, we got a, a great show for you here today. Uh, the amazing Kreskin is with us, and of course... Okay, uh, there it is. Viewer mail. Folks, welcome back to the uh, program. Just when you thought you knew everything on Earth about white people, <laughs> our first guest comes out with a brand new book entitled A Paler Shade of White. It's the history of white people in America, volume two. Please welcome a very funny man, Martin Mull. <laughs> Martin, good to see you again, sir. Thank you very much for being here. <laughs> Thank you. How you doing? Good. I love what, I love what you've done with the place. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's just beautiful. <laughs> so you got another book here. Uh, yeah. This is volume two. Can't keep a good man down. Haven't they suffered enough, Martin? Don't you? I think so. Well, I think it's really st still high time that the that the uh, white person or honky, as some of you may refer to them, um, <laughs> got his. Uh -huh. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And so that's what we're doing. All con and contained right there in the book. It's all contained right there. Uh, you cover like what? Uh, stress uh, for being a white person? What kind of stress? Uh, trauma? We're dealing with stress. We're dealing with romantic problems. Mm -hmm. We're dealing with um, just uh, interrelationships, uh, uh, crabgrass pulling mm -hmm. from your lawn, and other things that are really important to white yeah. people. Now, now uh, uh, on the show, you follow a guy around who thinks he's having a... <laughs> Yeah, what we did was we wanted to do a show on, uh, on white stress, and our, our show star, um, Fred Willard and Mary Kay Place, who are both geniuses in their own right. So, uh, <laughs> Fred Willard as, as Hal Harrison, what we decided to do was simply follow him for a week and hope that he fell apart. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and he does, actually. He yeah. does fall apart. Uh, he has what they think is a heart attack. In fact, it's not a heart attack, it's an anxiety attack. Uh -huh. and it was. It was brought on by eating chili with salmon. <laughs> his wife's favorite recipe. His wife had made that up for him. She yeah. made that. Yeah. It was homemade. Well, it's good to know that, that uh, Hal's not in any real trouble there. No, Hal's going to be all right. Yeah. I think Hal's going to be up around and playing golf for a long time. Um, wh what about white crime? Do you well, cover that in the book or the uh, show? Yeah, there are white crimes, of course, that are being done right now between nations. Mm -hmm. But we, we don't try <laughs> to uh, touch on that because that takes intelligence. Uh, so... <laughs> Instead, we dealt with simpler things such as a 14-year-old stealing the tip off the table at Denny's mm -hmm. and someone getting the wrong bag from the carousel at an airport. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the, the real big ones. So now, now even though that's, that's a mistake, it's still considered a crime. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah. that's a, You can do hard time for that. <laughs> <laughs> Leaving the airport with the wrong bag? Yeah. Mm, I didn't know that. You know what that. I should have called this? I should have called this my letters from jerks. <laughs> Because I, I saw the, the hand you got for that book of yours. I think it's going to sell. Now, let's take a look at some of the uh, photos contained herein. Well, that's, that was simply the idea that we wanted to make sure that there were photos suitable for framing in, uh, in the book. Oh, it has nothing to do with the text? Not really. No, not... <laughs> <laughs> in fact, not at all. <laughs> but a lot of books, you'll see, have that shiny area in the middle where you go, Oh, boy, picture. Yeah, right, sure. So... <laughs> 
<laughs> so, so we chose some. This, what, what was this? Did we have that before? This Looks is like simply uh, a museum. I think it just shows how white people can appreciate really fine art when they come face to face with it. Uh -huh. And they seem to be is, enjoying uh, themselves. Yeah, this yeah. is called a farewell to arms. <laughs> it was a, another working title for the book, but we had to give it up because apparently it's been used. All right, and what else do we have? Uh, apparently the three of us. Oh. This is a shot of white people doing, I think, what they do best, and that is keeping their lawn just <laughs> pristine clean, getting those dandelions out of there, yeah. and removing anything the dog might have done. Yeah. You know? Now, would that be like before preparing the lawn for a mulch? I would think you would have to be do a program, it. folks. Coming up in this half hour, Bill Zanker. That's Zanker, batting third, playing short, Zanker. He will be here from the Learning Annex, and also Eddie Money and uh, Ronnie Spector will be here, and... Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, Chris Elliott. Boy, this is this is quite a surprise. Hey. Chris Elliott, ladies and gentlemen. Nice to have you here, Chris. Gee, that's great. Well, this is exciting. Nice to see you. Good of well, you to drop by. Nice to see you, Dave. Yeah. Hi, Paul. How are you? Chris. Uh, Good to see you. Nice see you. So, uh, what, what brings you here? Why, why did you drop by? No real reason, Dave. I just thought I'd come by and spend some time with you and Paul. I haven't seen you guys all day. I thought it'd be fun. That's great. Now, that's great. That's really nice of you. And, and you know that it means a lot to me because usually when you come on, you're plugging something. Oh, I know. No, no. I have nothing to plug tonight. Yeah. I know. You always think that, too. Yeah, no, no. Sorry. This is not for me. I just wanted to spend some time with you guys. Yeah, well, this is... I got to tell you, this could be exciting. In fact, why don't we have... Paul, come on over here and we'll, we'll visit. The three of oh, us. Oh, that's great. The three of us. We never... Like, uh, We never really get a like chance that. to. That's cute, isn't it? We never, we never get a chance to talk. No, really, this is like the three the musketeers. Yeah, okay. everyone wants to see us. Yeah. So, uh, what, what, uh, well, what do we talk about? Mm. Whatever you guys want to talk about, I'm okay. open. I'm all right. Whatever. All right, I got a, I got a little story. Oh, great. Uh, Chris, you're, you're gonna like this one. I was, uh, I was out last night with uh, some very, very heavy people uh, in our industry. Yeah. And Excuse I me, was, Paul. Uh, you know what that reminds me of? Um, <laughs> this morning, I, I checked my mail. All right. My sus subscription came for something called Teen Beat. Mm -hmm. And I open it up, page 52. There's a whole spread on yours truly. I don't know what camera I should do this to, but Late Night Hunk. Yeah. Take a look at that. Now, I see some great stuff in this. Yeah. Let me read Chris, you a couple of Excuse me just a second. But, you know, I, me I mentioned this at the beginning of the program. I, I oh, already really? mentioned that. Yeah. Oh, you've already, you've already done this. So everyone knows that it's coming out next week and yeah. it's $1.95 on the stands mm -hmm. next week? It's worth twice the price, too. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Well, yeah. great. Well, yeah. I'm glad you okay, so Paul, go ahead and finish the story. Okay, I'm out <clears> last night and uh, there were some very, very influential people. Oh, uh, my gosh. Is that clock right? Oh, geez, is that the right time? Oh, my gosh, what am I doing? I'm sorry, Dave, I don't have time for this. I gotta get going. Oh, geez, I'm sorry. Thanks a lot. This was a lot of fun, though. Yeah, nice to see you. Hey, thanks, Paul. Yeah. See you later. Thanks, right, Elliot. Cindy. Yeah. You know, he's awfully story. proud being the late night hunk and all. You, you can understand that. As much as a press agent possibly. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what we could do? We could do one of these top ten lists, too. Okay. Yeah. I guess we could. We could go ahead. I'll, I'll, I'll just, I'll, I'll move out of the way. You, wanna, well, you know, this would have been a perfect time to... I know. I'll, I'm going to slip in that thing. We, we have like 25 minutes left. And the seven of that will be the song. When are you going to slip it? I'm going to slip it in at a certain point when nobody's expecting. From the home office in Milwaukee. By the way, the home office, I guess you heard, January 1st, they're moving to Tempe, Arizona. Tempe. <laughs> Tonight, the category of our top ten list, top ten rumors about Libya spread by the Reagan administration. Here we go. <laughs> Number ten, Libyans responsible for new Elliot Gould sitcom. Number nine, they emptied Al Capone's vault before Geraldo Rivera got there. Number eight, Albums sold on Libyan TV not recorded by original artists. Number seven, embarrass their local retailers by presenting out-of-date coupons. Number six, don't use real butter on their movie theater popcorn. Number five, Libyan Symphony Orchestra is all rented instruments. Number four, do the wave during public executions. That's tough. Number three, they don't rewind rented videos. Number two, they've done something to Gwen Verdon. And the number one rumor about Libya spread by the Reagan administration, their professional wrestling is fixed. <laughs> Come
commercial. And uh, then, oh, Bill Zenker will be joining us. <laughs>